Okay, right now I just want to give you a couple examples of some urban design, more of the details. So look at this picture. Um, the top half, this uh, big street in the middle, this kind of like swoopy curve that says collector pointed at it. Think of like the top half of the picture as one design and the bottom half of the picture as a second design of the same um, type of thing you're trying to accomplish. Okay, so the top half is called the, the pod and collector system. Um, see these cul-de-sacs? They kind of look like pods, right? But the, the top half, I mean, think about what it would be like to kind of move throughout this space. You've got all your houses over here in one area, kind of swooping around this cul-de-sac. Um, and, you know, so those are separated from um, to the left of it, you see this this other cul-de-sac, this pod, this swoop with all these apartments. So um, this is kind of segregated housing, right? So you've got your your single family homes, the houses over here, and you can't really easily get to the apartments. I mean, you would have to get in your car and drive down these streets to get to these apartments. So um, this is kind of starts separating people by income in the sense that you've got your uh, multifamily apartments versus your single family homes that are home ownership. Um, and you, you know, there's not a lot of like diversity and mixing here. You can't just easily walk from the apartments to the houses or the houses to the apartments. Um, they're separated. Okay. And then in addition to that, your school's way over here on, on the right. Um, you you would have to once again get in your car and drive over to the school where it's got this parking lot um you know it's kind of like in the middle of nowhere with a whole big parking lot around it now up on the top left is your mall right you're shopping so it's like the same thing you've got like this huge mall surrounded by a huge parking lot and then um you see kind of below the apartments these this like little strip mall but these are like extra stores that you could shop at but you can't even like walk from the mall to these stores even if you wanted to go to like one of these stores you would have to get in your car in the mall parking lot and drive over to these extra strip mall stores so it's really um it's a common design it's a common layout but the new kind of way of thinking about urban design is we don't like this we don't like what's on the top of the screen now on the bottom of the screen you have the same elements houses apartments shopping district school um but it's laid out really differently, right? So um, look at how there's houses, but there's apartments too. And you could, you could like walk down this kind of pedestrian lined pathway. See all those little funny things that look like little clouds or something like that. Um, you know, that's like tree spaces. It's like, um, so you can walk from the houses, you can get to the apartments and from the apartments to the houses. Um, from, from the apartments and houses, you can get to the mall. See, it's kind of here in the center. Um, you can get to the mall. You can also get to the school. Um, and so it's the same elements. It's just laid out um, really differently so that you've got um, easier access to all of the elements that are there. Um, and you have access to them whether you have a car or not. Um, whereas this this thing on the top, this pot and it's called the pot and collector system um, on the top of the screen, this is um, really separating all these different uses. So it's like the top of the screen is kind of like the old way of doing things <laughs> and the bottom of the screen would be um, more of this neo-traditionalist, more of this current wave, new way of thinking about how to design your urban spaces. Um, and this is also an example of like a picture because you guys have to find some creative way of visually representing your urban utopia. So it's just another example for you. Um, I want you guys to know about transit-oriented development. We talked about it a little bit in class. Um, you can look up Peter Calthorpe um, to learn more about it. Um, it's really this idea of this high-density area laid out so that every residential unit um, in it is within a 10 minutes walk of a transit stop. Um, some say this is want it within a half a mile of a transit stop. So really what you have is you've got like all this series of pedestrian pockets, you know, these walkable places um, strung out along a transit stop. So it's a little more um, regional than a neighborhood. It involves um, kind of a focus on how the transportation is going to connect um, your different elements. Um, and you guys have an assignment to look up some more information on transit-oriented development, but know that that's a thing. Um, it's a big thing, <laughs> TOD, so I don't want you leaving this class saying I never told you about it. 
Um, so this is just another example of um, a more specific example of design. Um, this idea of how you can design um, in this case an intersection to be more pedestrian friendly. Okay, so look at this arc here. Think of if your street was designed like this. So you're a car, you're turning the corner. This is what you would call um, has a large radius. And so if you're in this car, um, you can drive pretty fast, right? You're making a right hand turn. You're just going to swoop right around this. Um, and if there's pedestrians here waiting to cross, I mean, this allows cars to go faster. Now, why would you put this in? You would put this in because let's say your problem is, all right, well, we have traffic congestion. We don't want traffic congestion in our city. Putting in this type of um, intersection with this large radius, it speeds up traffic, right? You can move faster. You might have less traffic kit traffic um, congestion. But what does this do to pedestrians? You know, we're really kind of focusing on this human scale of design um, in this class. So, um, so you've got these faster turns and then these little antenna looking things like sticking out of this car. This would be like the line of sight for the driver. So if, if a pedestrian sit on the corner, you can't really see it. You can only, your line of sight is only going to show you the street. Now look what happens um, if we change this design a little bit. Okay, so this is just the same kind of thing, but with a smaller radius. See, so if you're going to make this right hand turn, you're going to have to slow down a little bit. If you're the car, you're going to have to slow down. And you're going to have um, your line of sight is going to have a better visibility of pedestrians that are like there waiting to cross the street. Now let's take this even a step further. Okay, so, so what if you make the intersection like this? This is almost like your traditional... Um, right in the you know, 90 degree turn. You have to slow down a lot more to just make that right hand turn. Um, it's kind of this kind of traditional crosswalk. Okay, so you remove this slip lane with this big radius. So you've got um, pedestrians don't have as much street that they have to cross. Um, so you've got safer conditions at this intersection. I mean, the cars are gonna have to slow down a lot more to make this hard right turn. And then you also have this extra space for pedestrians, right? Where you could put some landscaping, you could put some benches, some seating, just um, other stuff that would make it nice for pedestrians. So that's just kind of your example, um, one small example of, of how you can design something just like an intersection a little bit differently to be more friendly towards pedestrians. And that's kind of like the new movement in city planning is um, if the suburban planning was about how do we make build places better for cars. Um, there's a lot of urbanists, um, activists that want um, cities to be planned for humans and pedestrians really, instead of cars. Um, and so that is it for this video. And um, I look forward to seeing you guys in class.